So let's just talk about different array operations that we can perform. So there are multiple array operations that we can perform. So first of all, we can traverse the array. Secondly, we can insert one element in the array. Thirdly, we can delete one element from the array. And fourthly, we can search for one specific element in the array. And fifthly, we can perform the sorting operations. That means we can sort the unordered elements of the array, either in ascending or descending order. So first of all, let's just see how we can perform this traverse operation. So traverse means visiting every element of the array once. It can be to read the element or to display the elements. So suppose we have one array of elements like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now traversing means we are visiting every element. Either we can read the element and also we can print them. So that is the traversing of elements. So let's just see how we can traverse array elements. So let's just write the code and see. So first of all we need to include the header stdio.h. Let's just define one method traverse array. Now the method is taking one integer array and we're gonna send the size of the array. Now to traverse the array we're basically going to use one for loop. I will start from 0 till the size of the array and it will increase by 1. Now here inside we're just gonna print so we're gonna use the percent %d and here we're gonna print the element of the array. So the loop will continue to iterate and in every iteration we're going to print the element of the array. Now let's just define the main so int main here first of all we're gonna use one simple array so the array is containing five elements one two three four five and also we can calculate the size of the array so we're dividing the total size of the array by the single element so this will give us the size of the array so we're gonna call the traverse array method and we're gonna pass the array that we have created and also the size of the array and at the end we're gonna use return zero so this is the array traversing method so let's just run this so you can see here we have the array elements so this is the way we can traverse one array simply using one loop so we're done with traversing the array so let's now see how we can insert one element in the array now while inserting one element in the array so there are two cases first of all we can maintain the order of the elements by shifting the elements and secondly we can ignore the order we can simply override the new element like an example suppose we have one array now if we wanted to insert one new element like 99 suppose we wanted to insert this in the index 2 so because the indexing starts from 0 so if we wanted to insert this new element in the position index 2 so first case is either we can maintain the order that means we have to shift all of them to the end of this array and then we can insert this new element in the empty position and second option we can just put the element right here and we can just move these three to the last position so this way the order is changed so the order will not be maintained in the second case so let's just see how we can maintain the order and we can insert one new element so we're gonna see how we can perform the insertion operation so here we're gonna just rename this we're gonna call this print array so this function will basically print the elements of the array so we're gonna define one new method and we're gonna call this insert element now this method first of all it will take the array and then the size of the array and then the capacity of the array and also we're gonna send the index position and lastly we're gonna send the value that we wanted to insert in the array now first of all we have to check if the size is more than the capacity or not if the size is more than the capacity then we're just gonna print array is full and then we're just gonna return because the insertion is not possible because the size is more than the capacity otherwise if everything is all right then we're gonna perform the insertion so we're gonna start from the size till the index position where we wanted to insert the value and we're gonna decrease by one in every iteration and here we're gonna shift the elements so one by one we're gonna shift all the elements and then after that we're gonna insert our value in the position index 
and then because we just inserted one element so we're gonna increase the size by one so here let's just see how the code is working so we have started from the size and we're decreasing the i till the index position so that means we're starting from right here at the end and we're shifting all the elements to the next position so that means the element at the i minus one position will be shifted to the next so five will be shifted here then in the next iteration four will be shifted here then three will be shifted here and after that the loop will break we are going to insert this new value in the index position so the new value 99 will be inserted right here in the index position 2 so here we are going to have the 99 so here the new element is inserted and also all the elements have their relative order maintained so in this method of insertion we have shifted all the elements to the end and then we have inserted the new element at the correct index position so we are done with the method let's now call the method so we're gonna call the method insert element and we're gonna pass the array then we're gonna pass the size of the array pass the capacity which is 10 the index position where we wanted to insert the element so the index is 2 and the new element is 99 so the new element 99 will be inserted at the index 2 and this print array will print the new array so we're gonna call this here so first of all we're gonna print this array then we're gonna perform the insertion and then again we're gonna print the array just to see the changes so let's now run this so you can see this is the array before the insertion and after the insertion you can see this is the array so here at the index position 99 is inserted and then all the elements are shifted to the end so let's now see how we can perform the delete operations how we can delete one element from the array now here also we have two ways we can perform the delete either we can maintain the order of the elements by shifting elements to the left or there is second option we can ignore the order here we can swap with the last element so suppose we have one array of elements now let's just see how we can delete using the first method so suppose you wanted to remove this element so basically we are going to shift all the elements one by one so we are going to shift this here shift this here and shift the element here so at the end this element will be removed and all the elements will be shifted to the left so this is the first method and in the second method we are just going to take the last element and we are going to swap with the element that we wanted to remove so there is two way we can remove one specific element from the array so now we're gonna write the code and we're gonna see how we can shift the elements to the left and we can maintain the order so we're gonna create another method and we're gonna call this delete element and this will take the array and then it will take the size and then thirdly it will take the, the index of the element that we wanted to remove now first of all we're gonna check if the index is greater than or equal to the size or if the index is less than 0 then that is not a valid index so in that case we're gonna just print invalid index and then we're gonna return otherwise if the index is valid then we're gonna shift all the position to the left so we're gonna use one loop so we're gonna start from the index of the element and then we're gonna proceed till the end of the array and we're gonna increase by one now here we're gonna shift all the elements so element from the i plus one position will be shifted to the ith position so all the elements will be shifted to the left index position so that is how we can perform the deletion operation so here we're gonna call the delete element method so first of all we're gonna pass the array then the size and then we wanted to remove the element at the index 2 and after that we're gonna just print the array using the print array method so let's now run this so this is our initial array and after that we have inserted 99 at the index 2 and after that we have performed the deletion of the index 2 so you can see the element 99 is removed from the array so this is the way we can perform the deletion operation and the second case deleting the element by swapping with the last element is really easy so you can just try it yourself so let's now see how we can perform the search operation so suppose we have one array now there are two ways we can perform the searching so either we can use the linear search 
or we can use the binary search so in case of linear search we look for the element so we compare with the first element then we compare with the second element this way we compare with all the elements of the array until the element is found so this is the linear way of searching secondly we have the binary search so here we use the low and the high so we basically divide the array and we look for the middle of the array so in case of the binary search the array has to be sorted then only we can apply the binary search so in binary search we divide the array and we look for the middle of the array and after that we can search for the element either in the lower half of the array or in the upper half of the array so in every iteration we are dividing the array so this way binary search is lot more efficient than the linear search so here we're gonna write one method to perform the linear search so here we're gonna create one function linear search so first of all it will take the array then the size of the array and then the value that we are looking in the array so here we're gonna use the loop and we can traverse the array so it will start from i0 the i will continue till the size of the array and it will increase in every iteration now here inside we can perform the check so if the array element is equal to the value that we are searching for then we're gonna print element found at index and then we're gonna print the index and after that we're gonna return otherwise if we have traversed the whole array but the element is not found in that case we're gonna print element not found so we're done with the linear search function so here we're gonna call the linear search function so we're gonna pass the array and then the size of the array suppose we are looking for the value 10 in the array so you can see 10 is not in the array so now if we run this so you can see we have the output element not found which is correct so now if we look for an element suppose you are looking for 5 so you can see 5 is in the array so now you can see we have the output element found at index 4 which is correct the 5 is at the index 4 so this way we can perform the linear search this way also we can use the binary search to look for an element so let's now see how we can perform the sorting operation so suppose we have one array so sorting means rearranging elements either in ascending order or in descending order like an example here the array is unsorted now sorting means in ascending order all the elements will be in the increasing order similarly descending means the array is sorted in decreasing order that means 5 4 3 2 1 now to sort the array there are multiple ways we can do that for now we're gonna see how we can use the bubble sort to sort these elements so in bubble sorting technique we compare the adjacent elements so first of all we're gonna compare these two elements and you can see the first one is greater than the second one so because of this they will be swapped so the three will go here and one will go here and again we're gonna compare these two so because first one is not greater than the second one so they will not be swapped and after that we're gonna compare these two and you can see first element is greater than the second element so they will be swapped so two will go here and four will go here and after that we're gonna compare these two elements so you can see 4 is not bigger than 5 so they will not be swapped so after the pass 1 you can see the largest element is positioned at the end of the array so one element is at the correct position now we have to repeat this process again for the other elements so this way if we repeat this process all the elements will be sorted in ascending order so here we're gonna see how we can perform the bubble sort so we're gonna define the function bubble sort and here we're gonna pass the array then the size of the array now here inside we're gonna use the for loop so the for loop will start from 0 till the size minus 1 and we're gonna increase by 1 now inside that we're gonna have another nested loop and the nested loop will go from j will go from 0 j less than size of the array minus i minus 1 and it will increase by 1 now the inner loop will go less every iteration because in every iteration one element will be 
positioned at its correct position. So that's why we don't have to go till the end. Now here inside we have to perform the checking. So if the element at the jth index is greater than the element at the index j plus 1. So we are saying that if the first element is bigger than the second element, in that case we have to perform the swapping. So we are going to use one temporary variable which will hold the value of the index j value. And then the index j will have the value of index j plus 1. At the end the index j plus 1 index will have the value of the temporary variable. So this is the way we can swap two elements. We are done with the bubble sort. So now you can see the array elements are not sorted. So now let's just perform the sorting using the bubble sort. So here we're gonna call the function bubble sort and first of all we're gonna pass the array and then the size of the array. Now after the bubble sort let's just print our array. Now let's just run this. So you can see initially the array is not sorted. Here you can see the array elements are jumbled up but after at the end after performing the bubble sort you can see the array elements are sorted. So this way we can perform the sorting using the bubble sort. And also there are so many other ways to perform the sorting. So this way we can perform multiple array operations. Either we can traverse the array or we can insert one element at one index position or we can we can delete one specific element from the array or we can search for one element in the array or even we can sort the array elements. So hope you understand about array operations. See you in the next one. Take care.